Hello everyone, my name is Fumia Ida from a Bioinspired Robotics Lab at the University of Cambridge. Thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, workshop today. I'm going to talk about uh, model-based design and control of soft robots. In the last 10 years or so, uh, there are lots of interest in the use of uh, soft deformable materials in robotic systems. Here we have a, a couple of examples about the robots that use um, a soft material for locomotion, manipulation um, of different kinds um, and uh, rehabilitation and uh, even for sensing over the soft surface is a really interesting challenge uh, in the soft robotics research. So this is a, a kind of interesting trend because we have not used the soft materials in the past, but now we uh, this uh, technology of soft uh, materials can open up uh, many different uh, directions uh, of uh, robotic research that could be exploited also in the future industry of robotics. So I just want to talk a little bit more about the details of why soft robotics has so much uh, interest uh, in the last 10 years and uh, how this can be understood in the uh, future of uh, robotics in the industry. Just to give a few examples and technical innovations that we, um, we saw in the soft robotic research, uh, we have a lot of research in, in the context of electronics and soft sensors uh, by using stretchable and flexible materials. Uh, there are lots of research associated with uh, um, soft body robots for locomotion and manipulation purposes. And uh, obviously soft technologies are very important for wearable um, devices. So wearable soft robots are another big trend in this research community. Um, and the locomotion in general has a, a, a many progress in not only on land, but also in the flying soft robots, walking, running soft robots, jumping soft robots, and swimming uh, underwater. And then uh, we have uh, um, uh, lots of surgery uh, medical robot applications where uh, soft deformable structures can be go into um, uh, uh, space inside our body, but also the rigid body, uh, rigid robots uh, dealing with the uh, deformable soft tissues uh, inside our body. And then um, so the body assist and the rehabilitation. So this is more about uh, the application of soft robotics, how we can use uh, the soft materials for um, uh, confined uh, space in the, our, um, our own body. And then for more technical uh, basic research uh, in, in terms of the self-healing materials and the closed loop feedback control soft robots are really the fundamental challenges in soft robots. You can find a lot of uh, papers, recent uh, papers in our soft robotics or homepage. So please do uh, feel free to visit our website to see how many different technical innovations we uh, saw in the last 10 years or so. So uh, one of the fundamental aspects of soft robotics is that the soft technologies can provide something really fundamentally different from our, our conventional rigid body systems. Uh, and especially this uh, the diagram here shows uh, conceptually how rigid body and soft body system are different. Uh, first of all, soft systems have a lot of flexibility and a, a large number of degrees of freedom. And often soft system has infinity uh, degrees of freedom, uh, which makes uh, this uh, uh, area of research very uh, attractive. But on the other hand, we also uh, need to know what's the drawback of having soft structures. And most importantly, soft structure cannot uh, transmit large amount of force throughout the body. And therefore we have uh, usually a lot of troubles in terms of how uh, uh, to make soft robots stronger, uh, faster, and, uh, um, and more precise. So if you cannot transmit force in, uh, in a great deal, we cannot really make uh, a precise and fast moving robots like a rigid body robot. Um, so that's a really interesting trade off we need to think about. And after all, what we need to uh, do in soft robotics is that we have to think of the soft rigid hybrid structure so that we can take advantage of the uh, good parts of both things. Uh, so this is the kind of uh, research direction we have been working on in the last 
uh, five years or so, how we should think of the soft structure in the context of hybrid structure as, you, as can be seen here. So, and obviously uh, we want to uh, take advantage of a model-based approach because we want we need to understand how system works and, and the tractability is very important. So we have been thinking about how we can take advantage of our knowledge and material science and mechanics to yep, exploit it uh, for the design and control of soft robots. Uh, what's important here is that the softness is not a really uh, the engineering term. When we think of um, modeling of soft system, we need to use more engineering concepts such as a Young's modulus. So I think this is uh, probably the best way um, representing how systems are uh, deformable and, uh, um, and, um, and elastic. Um, so this uh, uh, Young's modulus can really represent the, the discrepancies between our conventional robots uh, which uses usually uh, metal and the hard plastics and so on, usually the uh, young modulus and gigapascal order. Whereas if we look at the soft system, including our uh, human body, usually you use a kilopascal or megapascal orders. So we have an uh, orders of magnitude difference in the young modulus when we start building soft system. And that makes uh, everything interesting at the same time more difficult. And I just want to highlight what, what what, uh, why soft robotics is difficult in terms of um, the modeling and control. So um, our conventional robots made out of rigid materials. Uh, we can actually see the, uh, the stress strain curve in, uh, in this kind of shape. So usually you have uh, some uh, linear areas of strain stress curve, which is quite easy to model with the uh, linear function. Whereas if you go down to the elastic materials, um, kilopascal order, we have a, a more nonlinear function as you can see here. And it looks like really flat at the beginning and all of a sudden it has a really a big, um, um, uh, inclination uh, at a certain range. And even for the uh, soft range, uh, soft uh, regime of the strain stress curve, we have highly nonlinear pro profiles like this, and therefore we cannot really use usual Fuchs law that is convenient for engineering purposes, but we need the alternative methods such as uh, Neo Hookins uh, solid models and so on. And of course, this is a uh, um, uh, many, many different ways modeling uh, elasticity of soft materials. And of course, these are all nonlinear uh, modeling method of soft materials, and that makes everything difficult for the control and design of soft systems. And the elasticity is uh, only part of the um, uh, modeling method of soft materials, but we have, a, we have to think of many other ways to model soft materials and the soft active materials have uh, actually uh, attracted a lot of uh, attention because we can uh, think of the, um, the relationship between many different kinds of physical stimuli for different uh, kinds of functions. So this uh, relationship between uh, different physical stimuli and the function has to be somehow modeled as well in soft robotics. And I just want to show you some example of this kind. And one uh, interesting uh, application is the uh, adhesion techniques. Like uh, usually soft material has a higher adhesion. So if you look at Young's modules and the x-axis, uh, this can be also mapped nicely uh, onto the tackiness of the material. So if you have a soft materials, we can actually have a, a, a larger adhesiveness uh, as a material properties, which makes uh, it interesting for uh, an application that needs adhesive, uh, adhesion properties such as climbing robots or, or grasping of a small object and so on. So, so this is one aspect we need to think about when uh, uh, we model the soft materials. Um, the, the control of adhesiveness can be also done through the uh, soft materials. So this is, uh, uh, again, Young's modulus and the adhesion uh, properties, but we can also think of the controlling 
of the module, uh, uh, Young's modules with uh, including adhesiveness by using hot melt adhesive. So this is one of our research we have been doing, how we can model the adhesiveness bonding strength with, re with respect to temperature. And again, this is a, a bit of not nonlinear property here, but we can do actually accurate control of bonding uh, strengths by uh, applying a model-based uh, modeling of adhesiveness. Also interesting uh, aspect is the viscosity elasticity uh, uh, change over different time scales. So this is the um, uh, uh, properties introduced by Evolt in 2013 that the, actually we can uh, um, uh, think of the uh, compliance with respect to different time scales. So there's some materials like uh, um, dental um, gum, uh, that they, it can show really rigid, uh, rigid interaction with the environment if you look at the really, really small time scales, whereas the same exact same material can behave in a very soft and uh, liquid materials uh, if you look at in the longer time scale. So this is another aspect uh, we need to think about when we're modeling a soft, uh, soft materials and quite interesting to take advantage of such a, a fascinating aspects of a soft materials in the uh, soft robot applications. So here is the material level uh, modeling of the soft robots, but of course we uh, we also need a, a higher level, a more um, a macroscopic uh, level uh, modeling of soft robots very important. So we want to introduce some of the uh, modeling methods of the um, uh, soft robot system. So this is an example, uh, one of the pioneering work by uh, Rob Shepard and, uh, um, and his colleagues uh, for the multi-gate soft robot. So this was the kind of starting point of uh, investigation of uh, lots of uh, pneumatically driven soft robots. And uh, this uh, demonstrated nicely how the formation and the functions of the soft robots are related to each other. And in this particular case, the air chamber deformation can actually lead to a very flexible locomotion in a complex terrain like this. But the question is how we can uh, make a model of such a function of the soft uh, structure. So the way how um, this paper explained a uh, principle of locomotion is that we need to think about the formation of air chambers when uh, inflated by uh, compressed air. So when you have a compressed air uh, uh, introduced in chamber, it can deform uh, in, in certain way uh, as, as can be seen here. Uh, but you know, if you use only single material with a single um, uh, uh, elasticity, uh, then uh, it's quite difficult to control the behavior of the system. Whereas if you introduce in another the rigid material attached to the soft material, and then we can actually introduce a really interesting controllability of the curvature of this rigid materials uh, over, over the soft uh, surface over here. So this is a really interesting principle that the rigid materials and soft materials have to be somehow combined to each other in order to have a better controllability and the better um, uh, design controllability of the soft system. So once we have a kind of um, this kind of design, we have a, we can be uh, we can easily apply some modeling uh, approach, macroscopic modeling approach like this. So uh, this particular paper introduced. Uh, the circular uh, chamber attached to the rigid uh, surface, and that this model can actually uh, uh, predict accurately how the behavior of bending of this uh, surface can uh, be predicted. So in this case, uh, the, the circular uh, chambers can be inflated or deflated depending on the pressure we introduce. So uh, depending on what pressure we can have, uh, we can actually predict the, uh, the curvature of the rigid surface. So I'm not gonna go too much into details, but I think this paper really nicely illustrates how the, the formation of the structure and the overall structure uh, uh, deformation can be explained in a very simple mathematical formulation. So this is a really, really interesting uh, first step to understand how we can make a bigger uh, motion, the deformation motion uh, from uh, macroscopic modeling methods of uh, a soft structure. 
And I, I also want to uh, briefly introduce how the universal grid power can be um, uh, modeled in uh, a model-based approach. So here um, is the universal grid power uh, demonstration of a pick and place of the uh, large variety of objects. So I don't think I need to explain the details of this, but uh, uh, the basically this uh, uh, end effector of the robot has a balloon filled with the ground particles and uh, these uh, particles uh, can be uh, deformed uh, when uh, a balloon is inflated. But as soon as you uh, apply a vacuum to the balloon and the particle jamming uh, into this, uh, um, the soft structure can generate the pressure to grab different objects. And that's the basic mechanism of this. So the, um, the important principle is that how we think of the uh, phase transition because, uh, between the soft surface and the rigid surface as, you, as uh, shown here. So when the balloon is inflated, this uh, um, uh, surface uh, plays the role of soft surface and it can deform uh, in the shape, uh, to the shape that uh, you're physically in contact with. Whereas once you have a, a shape deformation, you can apply vacuum uh, to uh, induced uh, uh, particle jamming. And the particle jamming can, in, uh, can further induce the, the grabbing force of the object. And that's the basic mechanism of um, uh, universal grid power. But how can we do the model-based approach of design and control of this system? Uh, again, this paper has nicely introduced how we can estimate the grabbing force uh, in the model-based approach. So basically uh, in this paper introduced how um, the gripper and uh, um, uh, object are inter interacting with each other. So in this particular case, we uh, look at this uh, spheric object in contact with gripper. And once it's a uh, um, uh, deformation uh, take place, the force between the, um, the gripper and the object can be explained in this simple equations. Um, the force uh, holding force is equal to the sucking force plus the uh, friction force. So this uh, uh, simple, and then the further, the, fr fr the suction uh, force and the uh, uh, friction force can be further um, elaborated by using this equation. So this equation, I'm not gonna go into details, but basically this explains uh, the deformation of gripper is reading to uh, friction force with respect to the contact areas uh, and uh, um, the friction coefficient. But at the same time, the sucking forces again uh, relate to geometrical constraints um, described by the shape of object theta. Uh, but then, after all, what we need is the um, the area uh, corresponding to the um, the contact uh, contact area between object and gripper. So as, lo as soon as we have these equations um, of the deformation, then we can uh, es estimate how much uh, grabbing force this uh, system can generate. So this is really, really interesting because uh, we are able to do the model-based approach uh, of the macroscopic behavior of the uh, universal gripper, even though we are not really looking into the details of the formation uh, or um, the particle behaviors. So uh, that's a really uh, interesting lesson learned from the, these two case studies of soft robotics, that the soft robots are often um, regarded as uh, highly uh, challenging modeling uh, problems. But once we understand the basic principles of functions, we can use, uh, we can employ the macroscopic modeling methods to understand the function of this. So um, this is a really good way of understanding uh, soft robotics uh, can be actually uh, employ the model-based approach for various uh, industrial uh, applications. So um, the rest of my lecture, I just want to talk a little more about how we can use soft um, robotics uh, approach and concepts to do the, uh, solve the industrial problems. So this is one of the pro uh, collaboration project with the uh, 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 growers in the United Kingdom. So we collaborate with uh, uh, the large uh, growers of uh, vegetables like this. Um, and that they are interested in how they can automate the, the challenging automation problems of the harvesting of lettuces. So this company is producing millions of lettuce every week, but the, um, the automation of um, 
harvesting is uh, is a very challenging problem because of uh, um, um, uh, uh, non-uniform uh, object uh, of the field and how we can grab and how we can assess uh, uh, assess the shape and the structure is quite challenging. So we have been working on how the robot can uh, um, manipulate such a, a non-uniform object like a lettuce and manipulate uh, uh, unnecessary leaves and the trimming the product such that we can uh, sell it straight in the uh, supermarket and so on. So this is certainly something um, a conventional uh, hard uh, rigid uh, robots have uh, uh, tried in the past. So we just want to apply our soft robotics ideas into these uh, problems uh, in the agriculture. So first of all, we just need to really think about how we can uh, formulate the problems because finding problems is the most difficult things in industry. So we have we paid a lot of visits to the uh, harvesting site and bringing some robots, uh, collaborating with our uh, industry partners, uh, which was a really good starting point of research. So. Um, we are very lucky with our great industry partners who could help us with the, all this logistics, how we can do the experiment on site. Um, and uh, that's uh, where we have started uh, with our project. So how can we think of uh, soft robotics problems in such a, a complex uh, industry problems? One of the things we uh, really looked at is the recognition problems of the um, uh, complex objects. So one of the really, uh, the first challenges we have to deal with is the, actually the sensing problems. How, you know, this is the typical um, uh, camera image if we take it in the, um, in the harvesting site. And uh, this is uh, not easy to recognize even for humans. Uh, and uh, you know, if you look at carefully, we have a good lettuce and uh, um, uh, some good lettuce in the picture, but the most of them are actually not very good lettuce. Some of them are infected, some of them are immature. Uh, and we have a lot of noise such as uh, weed and ground and uh, other type of uh, lit, uh, leaves. So this is a really challenging problems in the, uh, um, in the industry, but nowadays we have a very uh, powerful tool like a machine learning, deep learning. So uh, one of the first thing we tried is uh, um, the use of deep learning for computer vision problems in, uh, um, in this uh, field. So this is not exactly a soft robots problem, but uh, I think a soft manipulation, well, manipulation of soft object is one of the uh, important challenges of the robotics, so we take this seriously and uh, try to solve this problem by using um, some state-of-the-art deep, uh, deep learning uh, methods. So what we did is uh, uh, with uh, our students, uh, Julia Kai, we uh, went to the field and she walked around the field uh, uh, all day long and take uh, as much uh, data as possible in different conditions. So what we need to solve here is the actually two problems. First of all, we need to know that uh, we need to do the localization of lettuce. Where are the lettuces in the computer vision image uh, in the first place? And once we have the localization problem solved, then we need to do the classification problem, whether uh, each of this uh, detected lettuce is a good one for harvest or not good one. Uh, so we have uh, tried to solve this uh, with um, a minimum efforts because this is uh, something we need to solve it in, uh, in a robust and quick manner. So what we did is the uh, ready-made algorithms like uh, YOLO uh, or um, the dark net, uh, and then we uh, take advantage of this algorithm for the localization and classification problem. So what we did is basically we get the, um, uh, built up the database with the thousands of images. And we also need to do a uh, labeling of this uh, data uh, with the where are the uh, latest heads and uh, in the different conditions and different uh, lighting uh, conditions and different angles of the camera uh, and so on and so forth. So this, um, data set is first uh, in the first place uh, uh, fit into uh, YOLO, um, uh, the, the convolutionary neural network, and then do the training uh, based on this database. Uh, and then once we have uh, this uh, data set, and then we need to move on the second data set of the classification. So uh, we also collected a lot of uh, uh, labeled data with the good lettuce, bad lettuce, uh, and the noise. Uh, and all these things have to be fed into the different kind of um, um, 
the deep learning methods so that we can solve in an effective manner. So after all, uh, we can use all this ready-made algorithm as long as we have a good uh, data set and uh, we found that we can uh, eat, uh, robustly detect uh, the location of the lettuce head on the, in the worst, uh, first place. Um, with a different uh, location, different camera angles, but also we are able to detect the um, uh, quality of this uh, um, of the detected lettuce. So then, uh, when come to the next uh, ideas of how we can harvest this uh, uh, lettuces, so uh, one of the challenges is how we can find um, the the good spots to. Um, to cut the stem of the lettuce. So the lettuce itself is mostly soft, but the only uh, rigid part is the uh, bottom of the st uh, stem. And this is where we need to do actually the cutting uh, of this. And uh, um, this uh, particular uh, growers need to sell the lettuce uh, straight in the uh, supermarket after harvested. So that's why they are having a really supermarket ready uh, cut is a really most important criteria for this application. So uh, we spend a lot and lots of time um, in, uh, designing the different methods how we can uh, cut off this uh, stem. Uh, of course, this is not the soft robots. Uh, soft robots cannot really cut easily the hard stem. So we have used uh, really um, um, the uh, the rigid uh, knives to be placed nicely on the uh, small spot, the window of the cu uh, the cutting window in the step, and we found that uh, after all the good design that we can actually find the good place to uh, um, to place the knife uh, for the good harvesting. And then finally, what's really important is the soft um, uh, picking of the lettuce. Once you have a cut, uh, we need to have a delicate picking of the uh, lettuce because the, the leaves of the lettuce can be easily damaged. So this is a really, really interesting practice that uh, you know, the soft robotics is re really interesting and important for uh, manipulation of this delicate object like this, but the soft things can uh, alone cannot solve all the problems and we need to really have a good combination of the soft the rigid the structures. So here we have a, a really uh, the field test we did uh, a couple of years ago, uh, and uh, we managed to do the end-to-end -end, uh, demonstration, the harvesting problem of lettuce from computer visions to uh, uh, cutting and uh, uh, transportation of the lettuce in this location. Uh, and uh, we have a very good success rate, um, about 90% of success rate of uh, um, the computer vision. But uh, um, uh, harvesting and uh, trimming of the lettuce is still a problem. But the one, it's one of the biggest challenges is how we can make it faster. So at the moment, uh, we need about 30 seconds for this robot to harvest one lettuce, whereas human can do uh, within 10 seconds, which is something we need to improve in the future. Um, there are lots of other interesting challenges, such as how to do the trimming of the unnecessary leaves. And uh, here again, we have uh, uh, solved this problem of leaf, uh, leaf um, unnecessary leaf removal by using a vacuum cleaner solution. So here we use again computer vision to detect where is the stem and uh, where is the unnecessary leaf. Uh, but once we detect this uh, um, uh, problems, then we need to really think of the manipulation problem. So we try many different ways how we can uh, remove this lettuce. But after all, what we found is the use of uh, a vacuum cleaner that sucks unnecessary leaf, uh, leaving the, uh, the main part of the uh, lettuce um, untouched. So we need to do the a lot of um, uh, optimization of the uh, vacuum cleaner nozzle so that we can have a good grasp of unnecessary leaf. But after all, uh, we went, uh, we managed to uh, demonstrate a very good solution of um, removing the unnecessary leaf robustly by using this solution. So again, this is uh, nothing to do with soft robotics after all, right? The object itself is soft, but everything else is kind of rigid. So this is a kind of reality of the soft robotic research, how we can do the, um, the model-based approach of uh, understanding a system uh, in, uh, um, in a systematic manner. 
Uh, and uh, I just want to also give you some other examples of uh, soft robotic research, which is not exactly using soft uh, robot. Uh, this is a, um, a project we uh, work with uh, another um, uh, growers in UK who is interested in how we can do the tactile sensing of hard shell fruits and uh, vegetables uh, such as uh, mangoes and uh, um, and avocado and in this case we uh, start uh, working with uh, um, a mango to detect maturity level of this uh, uh, crop and usually the maturity level is assessed by destructive sensing so they have to do the sampling of uh, mango and uh, destroy uh, the hard shell in order to understand the maturity level but here the challenge here is that we use a tactile sensor uh, to do the model-based assessment maturity level. So we basically made uh, um, the hard shell uh, models of the mango to, uh, to assess how the sensor, uh, that tactile sensor input and the maturity level are related to each other. Uh, and after all, we're able to assess the uh, maturity level just by touching it because of the good models of mango. And I think this was really another interesting approach how we can apply the idea of uh, soft uh, robot interactions uh, with the, um, the rigid body interaction uh, uh, with the soft um, uh, materials uh, for the good uh, industry uh, application. Um, and uh, here is a little more soft robots model-based approach. So this is the, um, the quality control problems of uh, uh, different uh, fruits. So in this case, we deal with the orange, lime, and lemon, and uh, uh, lots of different kinds of citrus. And at the moment, the logistics company is suffering from uh, uh, doing a quality assessment of all this um, um, uh, uh, fruits uh, in terms of sugar contents and pH level and so on. So, and the uh, humans are doing all this juice making and uh, um, the uh, use of refractometer to measure the sugar content and so on, making a juice all day long, nonstop 24 seven. Uh, which is really demanding task. So we try to use some robotics technologies to do how to do the uh, manipulation of complex uh, fruits. And in this particular case, this robot is able to uh, demonstrating how to robustly pick up uh, orange uh, and then do the uh, complex process like uh, chopping down and take a picture and do the uh, juicing through the juicers uh, and then you have to throw it away. So all these things is not uh, quite easy because uh, the shapes of the fruits are different and we just need to do a robust picking and uh, uh, placing while uh, doing a different tools during the quality control. So we have uh, developed the jamming suction cup with a different kind of design. So we apply a more careful model-based approach to do the universal gripper for um, uh, in, uh, optimizing the design for different kind of uh, uh, um, uh, fruits. So this is another example of a good uh, model-based approach design optimization and control. So uh, hopefully uh, I give you a really interesting idea of how we can apply a, uh, a model-based soft robotics for different uh, uh, industry uh, application. There's really, really a uh, lot of uh, uh, problems uh, left uh, for the human laborers at the moment uh, because our conventional rigid robots are not able to handle. So we are really good at optimizing single task robots um, uh, what we call the Robotics 1.0. And these are robots that are um, uh, designed for, you know, given tasks and optimized for only for the single task. And all these robots are usually rigid and more efficient and, and cheaper, but the uh, uh, lack of redundancy uh, and usually end up doing only repetitive tasks rather than creative uh, tasks uh, with the flexibility. So what we are really facing trying to solve is robots 2.0, how we can make robots you know, dealing with more different types of challenges, uh, more using sensing and uh, sensor and sensing capabilities. Uh, usually these robots are more expensive, but hopefully uh, by using soft robotics uh, uh, technology that we can make uh, 
um, uh, robots more, um, more affordable. And uh, obviously the model-based approach is very important in this context, and that's what we uh, want to solve in, 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 the, in the future. So um, this is a summary of our um, project. So the soft robotics is a really paradigm shift in automation, and we have uh, lots of noble uh, actuators, sensors, and 3D printing technique to do uh, build a soft uh, shape, uh, soft body robots. But it's not only about soft body robots, right? We just need to deal with soft uh, uh, interactions in general is a really interesting challenge in robotics. Um, and, um, you know, most of the, uh, our robots in the context of robotic revolution is uh, um, represented by rigid robots. Uh, but in the future, we should really think of how soft robots can be used in this kind of context. And uh, uh, um, there are lots of lots of interesting practical applications uh, uh, which are waiting for soft robotics technologies. So that's something I uh, would like to uh, point out at the end of my uh, presentation here. So um, obviously we have a uh, lot of collaborators and sponsors in uh, our research project. And uh, I'd like to thank all of our uh, students and sponsors for um, the generous support of our project. And if you have uh, more uh, interest, please uh, come to visit our website uh, to see our publications, videos, and pictures. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.